our environment. Surroundings of environment. The surroundings of an organism or a community constitute its environment. The environment is not uniform everywhere. The environment of a mountain area is different from that of a desert area. The environmental conditions of a region provide stability for the growth and reproduction of all living organisms of that region. Environment also influences our lifestyle, clothing, food habits, type of houses, etc., which vary from one region to the other. Basic parts of our environment There are mainly three basic parts of our environment. These are lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. What are ecosystems? An ecosystem is a self-contained area composed of all the different organisms living in it, interacting with each other, as well as interacting with the physical conditions, that is, sunlight, air, water, soil, climatic factors, etc., prevailing in the area. Literally, the term ecosystem is derived from the Greek word oikos, which means a house, a dwelling place with the inhabitants living together and interacting with each other in some definite ways. This interaction is primarily for food, that is, eat and be eaten. Hmm, not too clear? Well, to understand it better, let us take the examples of a pond and a forest. Abiotic Components Light Sun is the ultimate source of light on the earth. Light intensity and its duration control the activities of organisms. Effect of Light on Plants Green plants capture solar energy and use it for making food by the process of photosynthesis. Light also influences opening and closing of stomata, flowering and germination of seeds. Indoor plants put in shade for a long period show symptoms of slow growth. Effect of light on animals Some animals are more active during daytime. These are called diurnal animals. Butterfly, sparrow, crow, pigeon, etc. are diurnal animals. Some animals are active only during night. They are called nocturnal animals. Owl, bat, cockroach, etc. are nocturnal animals. To show that light is an important factor for the growth of plants. Let us do this activity. Take two healthy potted plants such as balsam. Keep one plant in the open so that it continues to get proper light and keep the other plant in dark. Observe after a week. You will notice that the plant kept in light grows normally and the plant kept in dark becomes weak and yellowish. This shows that light is an important factor for the normal growth of a plant. Air All living organisms need air for respiration. 
plants take in carbon dioxide gas from the air. They use it to make their food. During this process, oxygen gas is given off as a byproduct which is used by other living organisms for respiration. Carbon dioxide is also given off when dead organisms decay and fossil fuels are burnt. The cycling of carbon dioxide and oxygen between biotic and abiotic components is essential to maintain their balance in nature. Large-scale deforestation by man has disturbed this balance. So, there is an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Temperature Temperature affects various activities of living organisms. The range of temperature at a place during a year controls the distribution of plants and animals. Most animals grow and survive within the range of 0 degree Celsius to 50 degree Celsius. Some microorganisms have the ability to survive at very high temperature or at very low temperature. Some animals and plants are found in cold regions. For example, penguins are found in Antarctica and pine trees on the slopes of the Himalayas. On the other hand, camels live in places with high temperature. Leaves of desert plants become spiny to check water loss. Some animals like lizards, frogs, snakes, etc. go underground in winter. This is called winter sleep. To show that very high temperature is harmful to plants. Take two healthy potted plants such as balsam. Label them as A and B. On a hot, sunny day, keep plant A in the sun and plant B in shade. You will notice that the leaves of plant A, kept in the bright sunlight, have wilted, whereas the leaves of plant B, kept in shade, are normal. This shows that high temperature is harmful to plants. Note, this activity should be performed in the months of May or June when the sun is very hot. Water and Soil Water Water is an essential constituent of the body of all organisms. No organism can survive without water. Land plants absorb water from the soil to avoid drying up and use it as a raw material during photosynthesis. Some plants like lotus and water chestnut live in water. Amongst animals, fishes live in water and breathe through their gills. Land animals need water for translocation of materials in their body. Soil Soil is one of the most important natural resources. It is essential for majority of plants for anchoring and for the absorption of water and minerals for growth. Many animals live in soil by making burrows or holes. Biotic Components Producers Green plants are the producers. They contain a green pigment, the chlorophyll. With the help of chlorophyll, green plants produce food 
in the presence of sunlight by using carbon dioxide and water. This process is called photosynthesis. Since plants produce their own food, they are called autotrophs. Thus, sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living beings on the earth. Consumers Animals cannot prepare their own food. They consume either plants or other animals. So they are called consumers or heterotrophs. According to the mode of feeding, consumers can be put into three categories. Herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. Herbivores are animals that feed on plants and plant products. They are also called primary consumers. Deer, cow, elephant and horse are examples of herbivores. Carnivores are animals that eat other animals. Lion, tiger and wolf are examples of carnivores. Omnivores are animals that feed on both plants and animals. Humans, crow and bear are examples of omnivores. Detritivores and decomposers. Some organisms feed upon dead bodies of autotrophic or heterotrophic organisms and they are called as detritivores. These are referred to as scavengers. Termites, crows, vultures and pigs are common scavengers. The decaying remains of dead organisms are called as detritus. Common detritus eaters include a number of worms, shellfish, mollusks and crabs. The organisms that decompose or break down dead organisms and return the nutrients to the soil are called as decomposers. They are also known as saprophytes. For example, fungi and bacteria.